Hey guys, it's snowing outside, so I thought I'd take a break at the Broken Wheel Truck Stop and reminisce about an old GMC truck that was super common on state and county highway departments back in the day. It's a 1946 two-ton dump truck with a Baker V plow mounted on the front. Kind of fitting for the snowy day we are having. I was reminded of it because I saw a model on my shelf of this very truck today. It was made by Diecast Promotions back many years ago in 2008. Fred Ertl III made several different versions of the 41 to 46 GMC truck in 1 16th scale, including a flatbed, a grain box, a stake bed, a tow truck, a fire truck, and a dump truck. However, DCP only released one version of the GMC with a snow plow. Now, to lower his tooling cost and expand reach, Fred also made the Chevrolet counterpart to the GMC in all of the previously mentioned versions. And just like the GMC, there was only one Chevrolet version with the Baker V plow making both of these very rare and hard to find today. DCP scrapped the entire 1 16th scale line of trucks in the teens due to problems with quality control at the factory in China. The last release was a Chevrolet C65 and GMC 6000 medium duty flatbed trucks. Such a shame as these were great trucks for us farm toy collectors. About the model Diecast Promotions made. For starters, it is made by DCP instead of Highway 61 Collectibles. Most of the 1 16th scale trucks were released under the Highway 61 line instead of the DCP line. Side note, Highway 61 Collectibles was a brand name of Diecast Promotions and was the manufacturer of their 1 18th scale line of cars and light trucks, along with their 1 16th scale medium duty trucks. Most of the 1 16th scale trucks came in a window box, but this one didn't. It came in a sealed hardboard box with full color graphics and the truck is inside is protected by styrofoam to ensure that the parts don't get broken. The truck cab is die cast and mounted on a plastic frame. The dump bed is plastic and does raise up and lower back down on a pneumatic piston. The tailgate also opens to dump the load out. You can open the tailgate normally to dump the load with the bed up or you can pull the top pins and lower the tailgate down like a pickup truck to hold more salt. This type of gate was very common on these small municipal type dump trucks. The Baker V plow is mostly die cast with many structural parts made out of more die cast metal. There's also a little bit of plastic on it. There is a piston on it and it will raise and lower the blade a little bit. The entire truck is painted in Highway Department orange and has Highway Department number 23 painted on both doors. Shows that this is a generic state highway department, but with the orange color and the fact that Diecast Promotions is an Iowa based company, I'd say this one was patterned after the Iowa State Highway Department, then genericized to cover about any state highway department. The truck cab has exquisite badges that say General Motors truck on the sides of the hood. These are chrome plated plastic parts with black paint on them. On the front, the GMC logo is there above the grill and it is tampoed in black letters. Now, that grill is plastic. 
but DCP did this so that they could easily make both the GMC version and the Chevrolet version of this truck. The grille was the most visible difference between the Chevy and the GMC. GMCs had this nice horizontal bar grille, while Chevys had a vertical bar grille. The hood of this truck is a butterfly hood, and it really does open on both sides just like the real one to reveal a very detailed engine and the rest of the parts in the engine compartment. It has a famous GMC inline six cylinder gasoline engine under the hood. The cab interior is fully detailed with seats, steering wheel, gear shift levers, dashboard, and more. The doors do open on the cab to show off the door panels and the interior better. The front windshields are clear hard plastic and so typical of the era, a single windshield wiper hanging down over the driver's window only. Being a snowplow truck, it has extra lights mounted on top of the cab. These lights, along with the headlights, are individual jewel style. There are a couple of parts that the customer must put on, which include the mirrors on both doors and the bedside extender boards, which are included in the styrofoam packaging. DCP was also really cool and included this 1 16th scale scoop shovel for the driver to toss a little salt in places that he couldn't get the dump truck to. Overall, this 1946 GMC dump truck with Baker V-Plow in 1 16th scale by Diecast Promotions is an exceptional model and if you can find one today, it'd make a great addition to your collection. This model reminds me of the Blizzard of 55 as told to me by a former snowplow driver. I'll retell it as if I was the driver. I barely got to the state highway department yard, which we called the barn, in time for my shift to start at 7 p.m. due to the falling snow. My boss gave me my first assignment to clear a 25 mile stretch of highway. I started out my plow truck with a straight plow because the snow was heavy, but there wasn't much wind. By the time I got to Central Square on the return trip, a whiteout hit. Central Square is about halfway back. Unable to see anything in front of me, I got out of the truck to find the payphone outside the town bank and shoved my way in and closed the door to shield me from the wind and snow. Back then, we didn't have radios in our trucks, so calling the dispatcher on a payphone was standard procedure to find out on updates on our route or the weather. When I got the dispatcher on the phone, he told me to get back to the yard because they are pulling all the plows off the roads due to the incredibly bad weather. A first in the history of our county. I met up with another driver who was a legend around these parts and we inched our way back to the barn with record fast snow falling all around us. It was a real snail's pace, but we finally made it. <laughs> At the barn, another driver was talking about how bad it was on his stretch of highway. He said he came around a corner on Route 68 and saw a Greyhound bus stopped. He told the Greyhound driver to follow him into the next town so the driver and passengers could get a motel for the night. Only problem, after about 50 feet, he lost sight of the bus. He looped back to check on the bus and the bus driver told him that he was too scared to go on, not being able to see anything. 
We did get word later on from the local fire department that the bus made it to town and the driver and passengers sought shelter in the local fire hall. So that's good that no one was lost that night. Me and the rest of the crew spent the next two days holed up in the barn. As so much snow was coming down, all we could do was watch. The storm ultimately dumped 102 inches on us in three days. While we were waiting in for the snow and the wind to die down, enough for us to get back to work, we swapped out our straight blades for V-plows. These V-plows are much better at cutting through the cement-like snow that buried us. My state yard had Baker V-plows from Springfield, Illinois. These plows were built for high-speed plowing with their specially curved mold boards that threw the snow high and wide. These plows also required less truck power because they were light in weight. This came in handy in my old GMC. Even though they didn't weigh a lot, they were rigidly braced and sturdily constructed. Baker V-plows had tripping blades to allow the streets to be swept clean without damaging the pavement surfaces. I really like these plows and they did a great job for us in normal to heavy snow. The Baker V-plows were even sturdy enough to tackle that 102 inch record snowfall. So, on the fourth day, the snow had pretty much stopped, and the wind had died down enough for us to get back out on the road. Unfortunately, with that much snow, we couldn't find the roads. Out there, I only had landmarks and the lights of neighboring houses to visually figure out where the road was. Then, I had to be extra sensitive to my truck to notice a wheel dipping, an obvious cue to turn the wheel and get back on the road before I landed in a ditch. I found myself out trying to push some drifts, but even with the V-plow on my old GMC truck, I couldn't break through. So I changed directions and headed somewhere where I might get some traction. By the end of the fifth day, me and the other plow drivers had pretty much cleared the roads and it was time for me to go home. I was exhausted since it's hard work and days without sleep. Though I felt like I had really accomplished something. I felt like the storm came to war. I lost that first battle, but ultimately came out on top in my trusty old GMC kind of short-lived feeling as I looked down at the gas gauge and noticed I was pretty low. And the closer garage was out of gasoline. I had two options. One, I could go to the closer garage and wait around for gasoline to show up. Or two, I could chance it and hope my old GMC could make it back to the barn. I chanced it and luck was on my side as I made it back to the barn. Time to go home, which there was a big surprise waiting for me there. My neighbor had come over and plowed my driveway while I was out plowing the roads. I thanked him by dropping off a cold six pack. Then I went on home, got into a hot steaming shower, then went to bed exhausted but still feeling accomplished. I hope you enjoyed the model and the snowplow story. Until next time, I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'd appreciate it if you would smash that like button and subscribe to my channel.